Hello everyone, welcome to A plus B I. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an interesting equation. I guess we could call this an undesic equation because of the 11th power, but you're going to realize we could also call this something else. Now, I'll be presenting two methods and you'll get to decide which method is better. Alright, let's start with the first one. For my first method, I want to turn this sum into something I can evaluate. In other words, I want to use the formula for a finite geometric series. Do you remember what that looks like? It looks like this. 1 plus r plus r squared plus dot 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 when you have r to the power n minus 1, which indicates there are n terms, by the way. That's why the last term is always n minus 1. And then this can be written as 1 minus r to the n divided by 1 minus r. Of course, finite geometric series, you can always find the sum. In the infinite case, r needs to be between negative 1 and 1 in order for this sum to converge, so you can find the answer. But in this case, it's good because it's finite. So how can I make my sum look like this? Notice that I don't have a 1 in the sum. And the last term is z to the power 11, which kind of indicates that 11 should be n minus 1, which means n equals 12. But we're missing the one, so what should we do? Here's what we can do. This sum, since it's missing something, we can kind of write it as follows. How about consider the whole thing, and then from it, subtract 1. Awesome. So this part would be the geometric series. And we do have a formula for that. Okay? The formula is going to look like this. Since n minus 1 is equal to 11, n would be 12, and then I can write this as 1 minus z to the power 12 divided by 1 minus z, and then of course the outside one I need to subtract so that I get the original expression, and this is supposed to equal 0. Beautiful. What am I going to do with this? <laughs> well, here's the thing. You're going to set, like add 1 to both sides probably, right? I mean, you could also do this. Make a common denominator. I don't know if that's more efficient, but you can kind of write it like this too, right? One cancels out, and we end up with something like this. But the, the thing is, the denominator should not be zero. So make sure z does not equal one. And under that condition, we need to make sure that the numerator is equal to zero. So z minus z to the power 12 is equal to zero. Nice. What can I do with this? I can go ahead and factor something out, can't I? So maybe factor out a z that'll give us 1 minus z to the 11th power equals 0. Beautiful. Now we got two factors and we, we need to set each factor equal to 0 to solve for it. And from here, we kind of get the obvious solution, z equals 0. And why did I say obvious? Because if you think about the original problem, you're, and, and you're adding a bunch of z's, like different powers of z's, and the sum is 0, obviously 0 will satisfy this equation because you're just adding a bunch of zeros, right? <laughs> They're all zeros. Cool. What is the other solution, though? The other solution actually will be more interesting, especially from a complex number standpoint. So if you set that equal to 0, you're going to get something like this, z to the 11th power equals 1. And what is that supposed to mean? It means that we are going to solve this equation. There's a couple different ways to approach it. You can kind of think about it as factoring. You can kind of write it like this. And then factor this expression like z minus 1, and then z to the 10th plus z to the 9th plus z to the 8th, dot, 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 and plus 1 at the end. Let me tell you something. z minus 1 equals 0 implies z equals 1, but remember, z should not equal 1, so that's a no-no, we can't have that. So you must find the solutions from here by setting those equal to zero. But how do you solve an equation like that? Again, that's a million dollar question. Instead of going through all these loops, we could probably do it in a lot easier. And you could also go off of this, but this is much faster. Take a look at this equation. There is no need to complicate things any further. We can go ahead and just you know, think about the meaning of this, like a number raised to the 11th power equals 1. Hmm. It's supposed to be a complex number, and 1 is not a solution, obviously. z equals 1 is not going to work, 
because as you know, if you just add one, you're not going to get a zero, right? And it's going to make it undefined somewhat. So what should we do then? We should use the complexified version of one, which is e to the power two pi n i. Make sense? Uh, one in the complex world can be written as follows. Obviously, n can be one and we can write it as e to the power two pi i because in the argon plane, this would be two pi radians, but it would also be zero radians or four pi radians or six pi radians or million pi radians, infinitely many values. But don't worry, we don't have infinitely many roots. Wait a minute, did I say roots? Yes. We are gonna be looking at roots of unity, okay? Because if z to the 11th is equal to e to the power two pi and i, by raising both sides to the power one over 11, I, I should be getting all the solutions. And they're going to look like this. Z equals e to the power 2 pi n i divided by 11. Of course, n equals 0 is not going to work because z is not supposed to be 1. Remember that all the time, okay? So you don't make any mistakes. Now let's go ahead and evaluate this. And this is still the first method. Okay, great. So we spent quite a bit, a bit of time on this. But from here, you can basically find the solutions, all right? How? You can replace n with certain values. Let me go ahead and show you how to do that with the second method because we're going to go through the same thing. Okay, second method. The first method kind of added one and subtracted one from both sides. And now we're going to use a different approach. Why not factor out a z and write this as 1 plus z plus z squared all the way up to z to the 10th power equals 0. Obviously, from here, we get c equals 0. And if you go back here, this should look familiar to you. Look at that. You can factor out a z, and yes, you will get the same thing. Make sense? Okay, so from here, from the 1 plus z, by the way, if I didn't know what this was, I could use the formula for finite geometric series, which is 1 minus z to the power 11 divided by 1 minus z equals 0. And this tells you z should not equal 1, but z to the 11th should equal 1, which means all 11th, all the roots of unity except for 1. Make sense? Ag again, we're going to write the 1 as e to the power 2 pi n i, and by raising both sides to the power 1 over 11, we can write z, which is the 11th roots of unity, as follows. And from here, remember, n does not equal 0. If n is equal to 1, for example, you're going to get z equals e to the power 2 pi i over 11, and this can be written as cosine of 2 pi over 11 plus i sine 2 pi over 11, by the way, but I'm not going to write all of these. The next one is going to be e to the power 4 pi i over 11, and we're going to get e to the power 6 pi i over 11, all the way to e to the power 20 pi i over 11. When you hit 22, you're going to be back at 2 pi i, okay? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.